for today, we will follow part 8 of this story, so I hope you leave your like if you like my work and want to see the continuation of this worthy work. The story continues with our protagonist together with his commander in his dance, and the blonde guy from before was boasting about being a professional hired by the glory group, but Yang Zhao realized that possibly this manure was making him embarrassed in front of his general, which made him completely change his way of acting with his disguise. Even the general noticed this sudden change in Zhao, thinking that he was possibly more comfortable with the disguise. After that, they both continued with their competition to see who was the better dancer between them. However, at one point the blonde guy from from before probably threw something at Zhao or something, completely ruining his disguise, and of course this ended up leaving everyone there surprised because of what had just happened. While the general didn't know where to put his face after Zhao's disguise was completely exposed, the scum from before called Zhao a pervert for pretending to be a woman, telling him to get out of there immediately. But from the looks on the general and Zhao's faces, something was not right, and let's just say the little bird did escape from its cage. It was only now that he realized that people were commenting on some kind of green worm that had suddenly appeared, if you know what I mean. And one of the people was completely indignant about this manure, saying that you really couldn't judge a man by his appearance. Finally the guy covered what was showing, but it was too late, and he had been embarrassed enough for a month apparently. So much so that even the general began to make fun of him, and then announced that if there were no more comments, he and his companion were winners of that competition. But the scum from before was against this, since it was he and his partner who did the extra round. However, Miss Lil decided to answer the scum, saying that this was something unimportant. And the biggest attraction was the evil worm, who committed an unforgivable sin, referring to the being from before. But she said that with regard to Zhao, she saw nothing wrong with him, so they could just keep their score. Unhappy with her comment, he said that was completely unfair, but no one told him to go around revealing something he shouldn't. Not least because earthworms normally live underground, and that's where they should stay. As he had been embarrassed to the point of losing all the reputation he had built, he decided to go right on top of the protagonist, to try to assault him, but let's say he ended up choosing the wrong guy to do it, and soon he received a blow from the supreme being. Not content with that, he even decided to finish his dance with a final step, where the head of the scum from before was under his feet. This caused the previous award winner and the other guests at the party to be completely surprised by this, but he calmly went to collect his award soon after, thus declaring that the general was the winner of that ballroom dancing competition. After that he went to try to speak to Miss Lil, and then introduced himself as Jong Baikin. She recognized that Zhang was a good man and certainly seemed to be an able man too, and she had even seen him enter with Miss Feng and heard of her family's situation. However, if he still wanted her to do him such a big favor, he couldn't just rely on dead things like the jade sculpture he had just won. At that moment she was about to ask for something she shouldn't have, but the protagonist asked her to behave. The crown wanted to drink a nice cinnamon tea, so she could calm her agitated spirit. Disappointed with the outburst she got right away, she said that in this case she would take Zhao Quan as a reward, in case he wanted her help. We then cut to the Lil family home, and it was clear that Zhao was having a hard time, and she told Zhang that he could feel free to go to her house, as long as he took Zhao with him. While the general was celebrating in his thoughts for getting the support of the Lil family, young Zhao was about to have a crisis, having to put up with these things. Something tells me that this Zhao does not honor the battalion properly, but for now let's give the young man a break. In an emptier room, he thought that the Sun family was the only one missing, and Feng Chen Chen had said that the reason for the Sun family not participating in the ball championship was probably because the old patriarch of the Sun family had some health problems. Then he saw an announcement on TV that the leader of the Sun family had become seriously ill, and the eldest daughter of the family had made a big fuss at the first hospital he was admitted to. Apparently she couldn't believe that her grandfather had become seriously ill, and someone else was trying to calm her down. In fact, this person told her to accept the reality that the old man had already worked too much overtime to stay in the world, and it was time to rest. It was only at this moment that the general realized who that girl really was, that her name was Sun Tian Tian, and it was no wonder that he had noticed that her name sounded so familiar. After seeing what was happening, he told Zhao that he needed a favor from him, and he asked what exactly his general needed replying with a confident face that he was going to Sun Tian Tian's house. Three hours later we got another cut, but this time to the hospital where the girl's grandfather was admitted. 
she complained to the doctors and asked them to cure her grandfather. Otherwise, they could never be doctors again for the rest of their lives. But they said there was nothing they could do about it. One of the doctors then decided to speak up, being polite and asking for her understanding. He said that the grandchildren of the Sun family were avoiding the situation until now, and their doctors were not able to see the information from her grandfather's medical tests, revealing that they were delaying the old man's treatment until now, and so it was now impossible to save him showing us that once again, toxicity is always present in manhwas. The previous doctor's comment was only confirmed to be even more true, when the scum from before who were trying to stop Miss Sun from making an even bigger fuss show up saying that she needn't worry about the rest. Then she praised the insect dung negatively, not believing that he had been able to do something so bad to her grandfather. According to him, since the old man wanted to give her a share of the inheritance, he couldn't just let that happen, so he had no choice but to try to finish him off first. And at that point, he should have already gone from that to a worse one. Still not happy with the situation, he said it was all her fault. And if she hadn't said that whoever cured the old man could ask the Sun family for a favor, he wouldn't have needed to speed things up even more. He then stated that everything she spent was already with his money. The insect from before then began to gloat, thinking that everything already belonged to him, now that the old man was probably one foot in the grave. However, she asked if he was really sure about that, and since the answer was yes, she had nothing more to say, and told him to leave. Confused by what she had just said, he asked if she had gone mad. But the old man appears next, saying that she was referring exactly to him. This made the toxicity from before completely unresponsive after seeing the old man well, and he himself gave the game away, saying that he bought an extremely expensive poison to be able to erase him from history. Disgusted with what was happening, he asked Jiang if he was the one helping the girl, and Jiang wondered why there was never any intelligence in villains. The protagonist then told him to keep his distance, and the only thing the scum knew how to do now was shit himself, and also ask where where his guards were. The protagonist revealed at that moment that this type of poison he used, he could easily cure, then saying that one should not consume something cheap like a poison like that, saying that next time, he was not to buy anything from the suppliers of the Spelling Eve group, calling the cattle manure from before dumb for not having done the job right. As soon as the general threw the bottle of poison from earlier that he had used on the floor, he decided to read more calmly what was on the label on the back of the medicine. And there it said that clearly this was a fake, and the product was just a scam product exclusive to Spelling Eve. Only then did the insect realize that it had been completely fooled. We then have a view of another scene, and this time we are in the Sun family home, and both Jiang and Zhao were in the meeting room with the already healed old man. He then got up from his wheelchair asking Jiang not to say anything more about the matter, and even if the scum from before was not to be trusted, he was still part of the Sun's bloodline. A while after that, the old man said that since it was getting cold, then it was time to make the spelling Eve go completely out of business, then asking Miss Tian Tian to escort the visitors out. Holding back her laughter, she said that he didn't even need to say that, and I didn't quite understand why she and Zhao were holding back their laughter at that moment. But after that the general said that the old man apparently had his own plan, because of what he had said recently, so the little lady need not worry, and as he had recently said, he would return home and wait for good news about him. A few days then passed, and we see that the shares of the company Spelling Eve were falling non-stop, as if it had jumped off a cliff or something. A person then who appeared to be the boss of the place, asked if his employee had checked this properly. In response, he says yes, and that the old master of the Sun family publicly said that he was seriously ill, and that he also got into this condition because the medicine he bought on their website was fake. Moreover, the young man also reveals that the poor were simply asking for their refund as the products they bought were simply making their health even worse. To try to get around this situation, he told his employee to try to make the information about the fake poison had been sold on purpose in this condition. That is, they really wanted to sell the fake poison so as to be able to save the old man's life. However, he said that they had already done this for PR, and shortly afterwards some police officers burst in, asking if he was currently the person in charge of the Spelling Eve group. When he replied yes, the officers didn't need to say anything else, they just asked him to go with them. The employee still said that since the old man had made the statement before them, there was nothing they could do, and when the police heard about what had happened, they decided to go to their company immediately. But as it was now a bit too late to say anything about it, he just called his employee a bastard, for not having said something so important to him before. Already alone on the spot, the young employee said that the company's stocks were piled up in the bathroom, and he still thought he owned the place. So, if he had said that earlier, he would simply be making the problems all about him. He then 
then made a phone call to Zhu Wenhui, saying that he had done exactly what he had asked, and now Zhu could rest in peace. We then see the general looking at the news of the day, and we see that the CEO of Spelling Eve had been arrested, and they would be going through an investigation and were very close to bankruptcy. Seeing what was going on, Zhao commented that this was why the general kept his cool, and let the old man act as he pleased, already anticipating that this would possibly happen to their group. He then commented that both the Spelling Eve group and the Glory group would not be able to get out of this situation. But the general said it was too early to celebrate, and the Glory group would definitely try to cut ties with the Spelling Eve group as soon as possible. Then realizing that apparently, that arrest went so well that possibly, Zhu Wenhui had a hand in making that arrest go so well. He then said that he must surely be having a lot of fun right now. At that moment, Commander Zhao asked what they should do about it then, since if they didn't take advantage of this opportunity to take down Zhu Wenhui, it would be even harder to take him down in the future. But he only told Zhao not to worry, and had already prepared the next plan, and according to him, he already knew that it would happen, but this time Wenhui would fall into his trap. We then have a glimpse of just where Wenhui was, and we see Miss Lil in his presence, saying that it had been a long time since they had seen each other, and then commented that she had gone there just to be able to see him. She then added that she had traveled through Jiangnan province without seeking money or power, and only wanted a good man. But Jiang Baikin dared to let his subordinate humiliate her so much, and wanted him to suffer the consequences. Wen Hui had the money, and she had the contacts so they could work together, and it would help him clear his name, plus get a good amount of cash as well from Spelling Eve. And she just wanted Baikin seven feet under. He ended up accepting her proposal quickly, but asked her to take that embarrassing photo in front of him. Still in the same scenario, but outside the company, we see some journalists talking about Wen Hui's group. Basically, his company was involved in arms purchases and sales through the spelling group, and also tried to bribe the prosecutor in charge of the case. And not even the journalists believed that a person with that kind of intelligence had been able to build the Guang Huey group. From inside Wen Hui's office, he watched everything the journalists said live on national television, and wondered how Miss Lil had had the courage to lie. But she said that she hadn't really lied, and had only gone there to see Zhao Kun, and only then did he realize that he had been betrayed by her. As it was now too late for him, Miss Feng together with the protagonist appeared as well, saying that he should have realized this earlier, as he was selling second-hand goods to compete with them. And she knew that day would come at some point in history. Jiangnan announced that from that day on, the Spelling Eve group would no longer exist in Jiangnan, and only the other group will exist. And just as he was about to say something about Wenhui and his Guanghui group, he ended up being silent when he saw that the scum was getting up. He then began to giggle non-stop, probably because he was already losing his sanity from being pushed so hard with gusto, and he asked if they really thought they had won that battle. Disgusted, he reveals that he had been in that business for 30 years, and for him it was just a little fight, then says that Miss Fang would soon be deleted from history. Jiang then commented that he had said he had a project, and then asked him to call this project he had and ask them personally. Already shaking completely, he decided to pick up the phone, but apparently with a little fear or fear of what was to come yet. As soon as he picked up the phone, we see the guy from the Martial Arts Alliance who got his ass kicked by Jiang, but was now in partnership with him, saying that thanks to the help of him and his subordinates, their families were under protection. Completely altered, Wen Hui said that he had ordered them to erase those people from history, and the other side replied that he would erase someone, but it would not be Jiang's friends, but him, making him go into complete despair, and already thinking that now would certainly be the end of the line for him. Not knowing what else to do, he started yelling asking if Baikin had subordinated him, and even mentions the fact that he deleted his grandfather from the story, asking how he had the guts to cooperate with a person like him. But speaking of grandpa, he answered the phone this time, and he was saying that this all happened precisely because he wasn't dead yet. At that very moment, we then have a cut to the moment when the old man was about to go from this to a worse one, and suddenly when he opened his eyes and thought it was too late for him, he was being carried by the other members of the Martial Arts Alliance. His grandson then happily embraced him, precisely because he had woken up, and returning to the present, the old man revealed that it was precisely Jiang who had saved his grandson, and the others for him even though he had made several mistakes previously. And for that reason, he decided that he would return the favor to Jiang with his body, and as for Wenhui, only the worst was to come for him. As soon as he said this, the two of them appeared in front of him, completely taking over the scene. And the old man said that he had personally gone there so that he could finish him off completely. This is the time when the son cries and the mother doesn't see, and the villain was already all blurry just looking at Baikin. And politely, the protagonist apologized, but he had already predicted everything he was 
was going to do in advance. While the old man greeted our protagonist in the background, his young grandson said that when Huey had kidnapped them in order to threaten the martial arts alliance, and had almost erased one of the family elders from history in a battle. As such, it was now time for him to pay with his own blood. Before the grandson could continue, the scum screamed begging for Baikon, saying that he could still be useful to him. The old man's grandson then couldn't believe that his grandfather had fallen into a trap of a despicable being like him earlier, and the guy was already completely pissed, and he was all smeared as well. And if it wasn't for Jiang being kind to the elder's grandson and having something to ask the scum, he would surely wipe that bug out in a matter of seconds with his own sword. He then asked Baikin if he could interrogate the dung for him, besides he was very good at it. But he replied that he didn't need to, so he let go of the manure from before, not least because his situation was already too precarious. Already completely defeated, the scum said he had lost that battle, and the spelling eve was all his. Furthermore, he commented that now Jiang was no longer that grieving person, and he had gotten back on his feet. But as soon as he said that, Jiang stuck to him like there was no tomorrow, and put the dung from before out of the window. But of course he didn't have to open it to do that. As he set the insect to flapping, he wondered if when he killed his father, and threw him into the sea to be eaten by the fish, if he ever thought a day like that would come for him. The only thing he knew to do at that moment was to beg Jiang not to let him fall, and Baikin said that since the day he had left the battlefield and returned to Yunai City, everything had gone extremely well for him. Moreover, he sought out all his enemies like himself, and crushed them completely under his feet. And so far, Zhu Wenhui was the last one left to fall into his hands, so as long as he finishes him off there, his path of revenge would come to an end. And this all happened precisely because Jiang Baikin still remembered the things those people casually mentioned back then, while he was being beaten by them. After hearing this, he could already tell that the scum from before was locking everything up, so much so that not even wind could pass through anymore. Outside the door, the old man remarked to Zhao that Wen Hui was already a lost dog, and if Jiang deleted him from history in that place, it would be unfortunate to leave the whole truth behind. But the young commander said that the general still had some personal questions to ask, and he could go back and rest first, or he could simply finish the matter of the absorption of the Spelling Eve group first and he and the army general would be visiting them again the next day. And you could already see that Miss Lil changes her mind quickly about who she would like to be with. And this time she already had her eye on the old man who had just come back to life. When he was finally alone, he asked Miss Feng what she was waiting for alone, and whether she had any problems she still had to solve. According to her, she had waited to thank Zhang for his help in planning all this time. But first she wanted to say that she had held back expressing her love for young Jiang before, not least because he already had a wife. But the experience they had that day had awakened her to the fact that only a man like Baikin was a real man, and he had become her hero. Even the commander showed his eyes this time, and I thought the guy was blind, since usually the designer of the work always leaves his eyes hidden. She then began to go off her rocker, asking if she might have the opportunity to invite Jiang to her house that evening once he has finalized his own deal. But Zhao said it was a bit late to do that, and the general couldn't be in the mood for it, so it would be better to avoid such things. But she comments that it would be good if he went in the afternoon, but preferably after 12 o'clock, in her village, through the window. This one literally wants to drink cinnamon tea. What a young lady. Suddenly, the old man's grandson ended up hugging her, saying he already had a wife, and then asked her what she thought about them going to dinner together after all that. Besides, it was a waste for a pretty girl like her to act like that. This ended up making her disgusted with him, and she ended up kicking him right where it really hurts, then saying that she wouldn't have dinner with him even if he were a dog. Turning back to Baikin, he wondered what good it would do to leave him alive, leaving the insect dung completely at a loss for words at that point. Baikin then adds that there was one thing he really wanted to ask him. Initially, he had thought that what his minions were referring to back then was the fact that he had had a fantasy about his mother, which led to that tragedy later on. But when he investigated further, he could not find any connection between him and his mother at the time, no matter how much he investigated. Without realizing it, when Huey ended up dropping a comment he shouldn't have, saying that this was a fact, and Baikin should go and find out for himself. It was only when the protagonist asked what he was supposed to find out about that he realized what he had recently said. Then he even tried to disguise it, saying that he had not actually said anything, and that he had done it, taking full blame. But of course the protagonist would not believe that, and commented that his parents had met 30 years ago, and 10 years ago he had become head of the glory group. As such, the Zhang family had nothing to do with him, so he could say everything he knew. He then asked why he didn't do it sooner rather than later, and why he chose to kill his father five years ago. 
In addition, Wen Hui also took the initiative to expose that it was him and the G Lori group that he should take revenge on. He then asked who exactly were the people who ordered him to erase his father, and who were hiding behind the scenes. As Wen Hui shivered, he thought that if he dared to betray the scum from before, they would never leave him alone once they knew about it. But if he didn't tell the whole truth too, he would be deleted from history that very moment. He then finally said that he would reveal everything he knew to Baikin. But first he should promise him that he would not kill him when he told the whole truth. And the only thing the protagonist replied was for him to tell him everything he knew right away. And finally, he revealed that those behind the scenes were the Hellion family. If you support and want to see the continuation of this story, do not forget to leave your like to support my work. It is always an honor and a privilege for me to have your presence with me so far. I wish you and your family all the best, and see you next time.